in this example from last semester, if you were with me, we made Pong, and at the base of that was this object, um, and that was the bouncing ball. Then we created paddles using similar object-oriented programming to kind of make it bounce off the paddle. We added two paddles, and suddenly you have that game. So let's walk through and refresh yourselves on these parts of Pong, um, just the bouncing ball. My goal is to translate most of this into Python. Although the idea is similar, it just spelled differently. It has different syntax in Python. So in the JavaScript version, we notice we have this giant function ball. This is called the ball class. This is like your own complicated variable on uh, what it means to be a ball. Over here, we have a member. These are called, uh, these are member variables. The little bits of data. They don't represent behavior, it, uh, what a ball is. And down here, we have uh, methods and or functions like move, bounce, and also show. This is what it means to be a ball, the behaviors that a ball exhibits. These are member uh, functions, we call them. Okay, there's these two parts of an object. Notice here that what does it mean to be a ball? A ball has an X position, a ball has a Y position, and also it has some sense of a direction. It can either be going up. If up is false, that means it's moving down. It could be moving right or it could be moving left, and those opposites are represented here. The last member variable is a speed. If we increase this to like 100, the ball will bounce a lot faster. If you decrease it and run that same code, it bounces a little slower. And maybe you can change it to the snail's pace. Okay. Then down here, so if we, for example, didn't have this move function, didn't have this show function or the bounce function, then this ball wouldn't move. We'll take this time to go over, okay, so how do you use an object? Um, down here in draw, notice at the very top we declared this uh, variable, the bob uh, variable, and that's for the ball object. Then down here, notice in setup we created a new ball. That's the initialization part of an object. And then down here, you since you have ball and uh, you have bob and bob exists, you need to tell bob to move, then bounce, then show. Notice that if you just click show, and we run the code. Bob knows how to bounce, Bob shows itself, but it doesn't currently move. Notice if you do something like this, if you tell Bob to move and tell Bob to show, it doesn't know how to bounce. It tends just goes off the screen. This is what it means for Bob to move, bounce, and show, and now let's go back to the details. So in here, the move function adds or subtracts your speed depending on the direction. That's how you get it to do this clockwise bouncing off these walls, or not so much the bouncing off the walls, more so the paths in between them. Notice it always moves in diagonal. It always has an up or a, a right direction to it, like an x component and a y component. Then the bounce function are those conditional statements that help um, this ball know how to change directions. As it right now is approaching the uh, right wall, it's moving right, and as soon as it hit it, it started moving left. And down here, since it hits the right wall, its direction changes to be the opposite. And that's the logic that we do to work through it. Lastly, if we have all these complicated behaviors, bounce and sh uh, move, we have to know how to display the ball to the screen, and that's what the show function is for. Ball is uh, filled with 255, 255, 255, otherwise known as the color white. And the ball has a certain position. Where is it being drawn? Well, that depends on the ball's uh, x and y coordinates. Notice the keyword this. This is a keyword signifying that it refers to this specific ball. This is ball, this is, this ball is named Bob and I'm referring to Bob's x coordinate, Bob's y coordinate. Okay. So we'll go over to Python. Python has a similar way of um, doing all those steps, initializing and then defining those behaviors. So this is very similar to the starter code you're given for the city assignment, except we're making a ball class. Notice that in Python, it uses this keyword class. And then for functions, it doesn't use the keyword function. It has def. Here, underscore, underscore, init, underscore, underscore, self is called the constructor. Notice that it uses self. 
And when we start initializing those member variables, we have to do self.x, self.y, maybe self.right uh, equals false. So our ball starts moving left. Self.up, uh, we'll have it move up, sure, true. And then we'll need a speed. Notice the use of self and then the dot operator instead of using this. We'll have it move at 20. And all this is the constructor. So when you make a ball, it is given these values to start with. Objects are, for the moment, very complicated variables. But it, all the work that you put in in the class definition, you'll save that time when um, actually using it. Because notice, I got in the JavaScript version, with three lines of code, I got all this different kinds of behavior. We benefit from this level of abstraction or generalizing things um, later. Back to the code. So far we have this. Then here we have another function, def show. Notice you're also in as the first uh, argument here. You have to refer to yourself. We need to use this when going on to here. How, what does it mean for um, it to well, for a ball to show itself? Well, you have to draw a circle at a certain coordinate. Notice the use of self.x and self.y. We don't have a size variable, so for now it's just 10, um, 10 wide and 10 tall. Down here in move, we'll just do a simpler version of this. For a ball to move, you have to take your x coordinate and add whatever speed you're going at. At the time, we're just going to move uh, across the screen to the right direction. And let's get some idea of like bouncing. Def bounce. We pass in self. Now we refer to ourself. Let's check our current direction. If we're going right, self.right. If self.right equals true. Let's change our direction, self.right equals false, else self.right is false, then the behavior here is let's have it go back in that direction, true. Okay, let me save. So if you have that link on my Google Slides when I press save and you go to the link now, you should be able to get all this code. I think I need colons here and colons here because it's Python. And notice down here is where we declare and initialize Bob to be a ball object. We have our standard setup. Um, have a size and a background, then we have draw. Notice that if we declare um, bob equals ball on line 28, that we have to use global in Python to refer to that same uh, ball named bob, and we tell bob to move, we tell bob to bounce, and then lastly we tell bob to show um, itself, followed by run. I press save, so if you go to this link, it should um, be this current code. We'll click run, and Oh, it just goes across the screen. All right, all right, ball. So in that very uh, instant, it goes across the screen. We needed to add a bit more lines to get that bounce of behavior left and right. So um, I need to update move to take in for account those directions. So maybe we'll qu quickly add that in. So if self.right equals equals true, then we add to the x, else you're moving right, self.right equals false. False means the ball is going to move left. So that looks like self.x equals self.x minus self.speed. We stop, we click save, we click run, oh, and it keeps bouncing back and forth. Oh, joy. Uh, I think these should be uh, coordinates. So notice right now, um, as soon as it moves like 
10 or 20 pixels over, suddenly I set the direction not to uh, detect the wall, but really just detect its own direction. So it kind of bounces in between two positions. Down here, we should really set self.x is uh, less than, is greater than or equal to our canvas size, which is 500. And then down here, I hopefully will get it to, oops. So, yeah, yeah, less than. <laughs> Else if uh, self dot x is greater, less than, or equal to zero, I think. And that's what we want. <coughs> no? Self dot x. L if, like that. Boop, 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 boop. OK, now we have that ball that bounces one dimensionally back and forth. OK, if you copy and paste this code um, from the slide in this link, you will have it. Feel free to modify this to fit the building. That's the end of this lecture. There's five minutes left to class. Do start your reflections.